Is Ghana experiencing a state of rebellion? Following the president's decision to cancel a planned Pan-African rally, the public has reacted aggressively. They have opposed the president's stance and are demanding explanations. A recent twist occurred when an official expressed concerns about the rally, alleging hidden agendas that could harm the state's well-being. This claim, lacking supporting evidence, has further fueled the controversy. Some argue that it's merely an attempt to prevent Africans from promoting pan-Africanism. The question remains, why would the president take such action? Let's find out. Canceling a highly anticipated pan-African event in Ghana has left many scratching their heads and questioning the government's decision. Set to go down on January 7, 2024, the event was gearing up to host heavyweights like Professor Lumumba, Julius Malema, and Dr. Ariana Peter Obi, along with a lineup of talented artists. The mission? Igniting the voices of Africa and empowering the next generation. The sudden cancellation has ignited a storm of controversy, with people from all walks of life expressing their disappointment and confusion. Many were looking forward to sulking in the wisdom of Professor Lumumba, whose words have a knack for steering inspiration. Julius Malema, known for his fiery speeches and passionate advocacy, was another eagerly anticipated speaker. Dr. Ariana Peter Obi, with her expertise, was set to add a touch of intellectual depth to the proceedings. So, what led to the cancellation? The government's motives have become a hot topic of debate, some argue that hidden agendas might be at play, while others believe it could be a logistical action. Whatever the reason, one thing is clear. The people of Ghana and the broader African community are left in the dark, eagerly seeking answers. The Pan-African event aimed to be a beacon of hope for the youth, a platform where voices could rise and echo across the continent. The slogan, Igniting the Voices of Africa, excited the event's spirit a call to action for the younger generation to stand up, speak out, and be the change they want to see. After the cancellation, social media platforms have become a buzzing hive of opinions and speculations. The disappointment is palpable, with many expressing frustration at the missed opportunity to be inspired by influential figures slated to grace the stage. The youth, in particular, eagerly anticipated the event as a chance to connect with leaders who have championed the causes they believe in. The cancellation has left them disheartened and wondering if their voices truly matter. It's a blow to the morale of a generation looking for guidance and inspiration. Some argue that this cancellation is a setback for the Pan-African movement, emphasizing the need for unity and solidarity across the continent. With its diverse lineup of speakers and artists, the event was poised to showcase the rich African cultures and perspectives fostering a sense of unity among the people. The timing of the cancellation has also raised eyebrows. Coming on the heels of the new year, it has left many questioning the government's priorities. As the people were gearing up to usher in a new year with renewed hope and aspirations, the cancellation has cast a shadow over the beginning of 2024. So why was the Pan-African event canceled? The unexpected cancellation of the Pan-African event mere hours before it was set to kick off, sent shockwaves through attendees, organizers, and the entire Pan-African community. The organizers caught off guard, disclosed that the Ghanaian government was the puppet master behind the scenes, pulling the strings to halt the ritual. This surprising twist, especially after the government had initially greenlit the event in November 2023, has stirred up frustration and anger among the public. The sudden about faced by the government has left everyone searching for answers after the canceled event. Eagerly anticipating an enriching experience, attendees found themselves blindsided by this last-minute decision. The abrupt cancellation only added to the bewilderment, leaving many wondering about the motivations and reasoning behind such a drastic change of heart. Organizers who had invested time, effort, and resources into planning the event were left with the government's unexpected directives, and among them was palpable, and the disappointment in conveying the unfortunate news to eager participants hung heavy in the air. The ride from approval to cancellation quickly deepened the disillusionment surrounding the situation. The frustration and anger among the public are not only directed at the cancellation itself, but also at the timing of the decision. 
With just hours to spare before the event's commencement, the government's directive blindsided everyone involved. The lack of a clear and timely explanation has fueled speculations and conspiracy theories, further muddying the waters of understanding. Before discussing the actual cause, let's first understand how the people reacted to see how important this event was. A wave of backlash and disappointment swept through the Pan-African community as news of the event's cancellation spread. The collective expression of discontent was noticeable, with many openly sharing their sadness and frustration at the abrupt turn of events. Attendees, some of whom had traveled from distant places, were grappling with mixed emotions and a profound sense of letdown. The government's sudden reversal of approval left attendees questioning the reliability and consistency of decision-making. Those who had invested time, effort, and resources in preparing for the event now faced the emotional toll of disappointment and the practical challenges posed by the cancellation. The aftermath of this unforeseen development has prompted a closer look at the impact on those eagerly anticipating participating in the Pan-African gathering. For attendees who had traveled from far-flung locations, the cancellation represented more than just a dashed expectation. It translated into tangible financial losses. Plans for transportation and accommodation had been meticulously arranged, with many incurring expenses that now seemed futile after the canceled event. The government's abrupt about-face disrupted the personal plans of those involved and dealt a blow to the pockets of individuals who had financially committed to being part of the gathering. The financial implications extended beyond attendees to encompass various stakeholders, including performers and service providers. Artists and entertainers, prepared to showcase their talent and contribute to the event's success, grappled with the cancellation's fallout. The financial investments these individuals and organizations made and the lost opportunities for exposure and collaboration added another layer of frustration to the overall sentiment of letdown. Did this make people lose hope? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Amidst the fallout of the canceled Pan-African event, attendees' voices echoed a symphony of anger and sadness. One particularly strong perspective came from an individual who proudly identified as a Pan-Africanist and cultural activist. This voice of anguish grieved the lost chance to soak in the wisdom of esteemed speakers like Professor Lumumba and Julius Malema. For this self-identified Pan-Africanist, the event promised to be a transformative experience, an opportunity to glean insights and inspiration from thought leaders who have shaped African unity and empowerment discourse. The abrupt cancellation on the night of the anticipated gathering left attendees like this cultural activist bewildered and questioning the government's sincerity in championing Pan-African ideals. The frustration attendees express goes beyond mere disappointment. It speaks to a deeper disillusionment with the perceived lack of commitment to fostering a united and empowered Pan-African community. The sudden cancellation robbed them of the chance to hear powerful voices and cast doubt on the government's dedication to promoting the very principles the event aimed to celebrate. How was this rally stopped? What controversies does this spark? The decision to employ the military to stop the Pan-African event raised eyebrows and heightened public dissatisfaction. Many found it perplexing that such a drastic measure was taken, especially when there were lingering questions about the validity of the cancellation. Critics contended that these concerns should have been addressed long before the scheduled date if there were legitimate reasons for calling off the event. The use of military personnel on the event night with attendees already present, introduced an additional layer of confusion and frustration. The presence of law enforcement in this context further fueled the bewilderment among the public, who were left questioning the necessity of such a show of force. Instead of clarifying the reasons behind the cancellation, the military intervention only deepened the controversy surrounding the entire episode. The timing and manner of the military intervention have become focal points of critique. Critics argue that employing such measures, particularly when attendees were peacefully gathered for the event, sends the wrong message about the government's handling of public gatherings. Military involvement in what was supposed to be a cultural and intellectual celebration has raised eyebrows and stirred concerns about the broader implications for freedom of expression and assembly. 
The dissatisfaction with the military intervention extends beyond the Pan-African community, resonating with a broader audience that values the principles of clarity and democratic governance. The use of force in a situation many perceive could have been resolved through open dialogue has left a lingering sense of unease. Instead of fostering understanding, the military presence has created distrust and raised questions about the government's commitment to democratic values. How did this impact the country overall? For many, the abrupt cancellation of the Pan-African event marked what some deem as one of the darkest days in Ghana's history. The international speakers, celebrated for their bold and truthful narratives, were effectively silenced, casting a shadow over the nation's commitment to free expression and the Pan-African movement. The designation of this episode as a dark day in Ghana's history highlights the gravity of the situation. The event, meant to celebrate African unity and empowerment, symbolized stifled voices and missed opportunities for dialogue. The decision to silence renowned international speakers has not only resonated within the borders of Ghana, but has also reverberated across the broader Pan-African community and beyond. The cancellation is seen as a stain on Ghana's legacy, particularly in its historical role as a proponent of Pan-Africanism. Critics argue that stifling free expression contradicts the very principles that the Pan-African movement stands for. Unity, empowerment, and the amplification of diverse voices. The international speakers, renowned for their fearless narratives, were meant to contribute to the richness of the dialogue and inspire a generation to embrace their African identity. The silencing of these voices has sparked a wider debate about the state of freedom of expression in Ghana and the government's commitment to upholding democratic values. The Pan-African movement, which has its roots deeply embedded in Ghana's history, is now challenged to reconcile its ideals with the stark reality of a cancelled event that symbolizes a departure from the principles it seeks to champion. But what led to all this? What made the Ghana president cancel this event? After the widespread backlash, Professor Ransford, a senior political science lecturer at the University of Ghana, injected a new dimension into the discourse. Days after the cancellation, he asserted that the organizers had not been entirely transparent about the event's true nature. According to Professor Ransford, the Pan-African gathering wasn't solely a conference. It harbored a covert agenda, unveiling a political figure and presenting a political vision for Ghana. Professor Ransford's claim suggests that the event, rather than solely focusing on Pan-African ideals, had a hidden political motive that the organizers failed to disclose adequately. Introducing a political undercurrent raises questions about the transparency and intentions of the organizers, Critics argue that the public should have been informed beforehand if the event had dual purposes. The unexpected unveiling of political aspirations in the aftermath of the cancellation has left many feeling misled and further fueled suspicions about the motives behind calling off the Pan-African gathering. The notion that the event intended to introduce a political figure and outline a political vision for Ghana has stirred curiosity and skepticism. While some view it as a strategic move to merge cultural celebration with political discourse, others perceive it as a breach of trust, undermining the authenticity of the Pan-African movement. The intersection of cultural events and political ambitions has now become a focal point of discussion, with the Pan-African community grappling with the implications of this newfound revelation. How have people reacted to the claim presented by Professor Ransford? The criticism leveled by Professor Ransford at the organizers, accusing them of not fully disclosing the dual purpose of the Pan-African event, has injected a new layer of complexity into the unfolding controversy. His argument that the event's cancellation might be linked to political considerations and security concerns has further fueled the debate surrounding transparency. In the wake of this disclosure, the Ghanaian government's silence has become a glaring point of contention Calls for an explanation have grown louder as the Pan-African community seeks to understand the motives behind the cancellation. Professor Ransford's claim, asserting that knowledge of the political unveiling might have triggered security concerns, adds a sense of urgency to the need for clarity from the government. The absence of an official response from the Ghanaian government has intensified frustration and speculation. The Pan-African community, already disheartened by the cancelled event, is now fighting with a lack of transparency surrounding the government's role in the unfolding drama. 
the prolonged silence has led many to interpret the incident as a deliberate attempt to hide the Pan-African movement, further eroding trust in the authorities. If the claims that the rally had some political agenda are wrong, what led the president to stop this rally? The abrupt cancellation of the convention raises eyebrows and hints at a reluctance to grapple with internal criticisms. Connecting with the sentiments of the African people requires leaders to harmonize with the rhythm of the challenges faced by their citizens. In this context, Dr. Akirana's call resonates as a crucial reminder, urging leaders to adjust themselves to the needs of their people. The significance of the canceled convention goes beyond being a mere missed opportunity. It serves as a sign that leaders may be falling short in showcasing their commitment to Pan-African ideals. Dr. Akirana's emphasis on purposeful leadership underscores that Pan-Africanism is not a one-size-fits-all concept to be worn as a badge of pride. Rather, it demands a genuine understanding of the diverse challenges different African nations face. The lack of any further explanations sparked allegations. Claims are circulating that the president is being portrayed as a puppet controlled by external influences, particularly white people. The narrative suggests that the president is purportedly opposed to any rallies that could potentially empower the black community. These damning assertions have ignited a collective response, prompting widespread dissatisfaction and opposition against the president. The notion that the president is acting as a puppet for external forces raises serious concerns about the authenticity of his commitment to empowering the black community. The claim implies a reluctance to support events that could serve as platforms for black empowerment, further fueling discontent among the populace. The sweeping response against the president highlights the gravity of the allegations and their potential impact on public trust and confidence. The allegation of external control adds a layer of complexity to the already charged situation surrounding the canceled convention. It introduces a narrative that questions the president's motives and dedication to fostering empowerment within the black community. As the claims gain attention, the Pan-African community is left grappling with the implications of a leader perceived as working against the ideals of unity and empowerment that the canceled convention aimed to promote. The public standing up against the president indicates the growing discontent fueled by these allegations. It highlights the need for leaders to address such serious claims and reaffirm their commitment to the principles of pan-Africanism. In the face of these allegations, the president faces the challenge of not only dispelling doubts about external influence, but also demonstrating a genuine commitment to the empowerment of black people. The canceled convention, already a source of frustration, has become a focal point for wider discontent and skepticism regarding the president's motivations. The Pan-African community demands transparency and accountability, seeking answers to these serious allegations that threaten to tarnish the president's standing. As the situation becomes clear, the need for open dialogue, clarification, and a recommitment to the principles of black empowerment becomes imperative to rebuild trust and address the concerns of a populace standing up against perceived external influence. The recent decision made by the president is undeniably raising eyebrows, with many questioning its appropriateness. This highlights the critical need for leaders to pause and reflect before taking actions that could profoundly impact the sentiments of the people they serve. It's a moment that demands careful consideration of the potential repercussions on public trust and sentiment. The leadership flaws that have already surfaced raise concerns about the president's decision-making. Weaknesses in judicial independence, the rule of law, corruption, and public service delivery present formidable challenges to effective governance. These shortcomings and the controversial decisions surrounding the canceled convention contribute to a growing perception of leadership inadequacy. The sentiments of the Ghanaian people echo a desire for a leader who embodies resilience and is determined in their commitment to good governance. The call for a leader who refuses to accept no as an answer reflects a collective yearning for moral leadership that prioritizes the well-being and aspirations of the nation. At this crucial juncture, the president faces a pivotal moment in his leadership. The decisions must align with the public's sentiments, acknowledging the existing flaws and working towards a more transparent and accountable governance structure. Failing to consider the public sentiment may further erode confidence in his leadership, strengthening the challenges already present in the nation's governance. The request for decisions aligned with public sentiments isn't merely a call for populism, 
but a recognition that effective leadership requires a deep understanding of the needs and aspirations of the people. In this delicate period, the president can course correct and demonstrate a commitment to responsive and accountable governance. The consequences of decisions made during this time will undoubtedly shape the trajectory of the president's leadership. It's a defining moment that demands introspection, empathy, and a genuine connection with the sentiments of the people. Steering the course towards decisions that resonate positively with the public is not just a political necessity, it's a critical step toward rebuilding trust and fostering leadership that truly reflects the aspirations of the Ghanaian people. Do you think the president needs to do something to end the distrust in public? Will he be able to gain dominance next time? What is the point of taking these actions? Let us know in the comment section if people will let him remain in power now. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.